Hey, how's it going guys? This is PMAC again with Spheric Reptiles and today I'll be covering how to feed them. There's a lot more things that go into it when you have more than one or two, but even with us starting off with a small breeding stock of just 20 currently, um, we still have ran into some issues with some animals that, you know, again we're talking about ball pythons that prefer live food and also some that will accept frozen thawed. I don't think there's ever a question as to whether an animal will accept a live prey item. If you get the right one, it'll agitate them enough and they'll eventually strike it if it's not too long. All pythons are a little bit more finicky. So, you know, as a cost option is we're feeding as many of the animals frozen thawed as we can because it's more cost efficient. Uh, for those that are starting out, you definitely, you don't want to just be spending money where you don't have to, uh, but you still want to take care of your animals to the best of your ability. So, um, other than the other housing and husbandry things, feeding is the most important thing we can do for our animals to make sure that they get used to us. So what I'll cover now is I'll be feeding five of our five of our snakes on um, these rat pups. I got five rat pups. And you can see that they're cute little rat pups. They're small, they're a lot. So the first one that we'll be feeding will be this red stripe clown. Um, it's a male red stripe clown, and I'll remove the housing from it, from the cage. It has a little poop in there, but I'll get that after he's eaten. And so I'm going to throw this one pup right in there. So what, what we normally do is after they've got the prey item and they've secured it and I see that the animal is not going to bite the snake, is I take the lid and I just cover it back up and put it up on back on the shelf with the heat tape. All right, guys, next we got a bamboo inchy calico female that we'll be feeding. And we named her Boo. So what I'll do with Boo is I will... Now that she's got a firm hold on the uh, on the rat pup, what I still like to do is I like to cover it. That way she can eat in peace and I'll check back on her in a couple of minutes. All right, uh, next on the list, we got a male pastel orange dream, ball python, of course. Um, and I'm showing you different animals so that if, you, if this is something that you're running through in your collection, what I found is that Again, we try to use the frozen thawed animals first. And secondly, then we, we offer them a live prey item um, that's kind of, you know, around that mid body width. We want an animal that will kind of make that stick out a little bit. So um, with this animal, he is normally a reluctant eater. Well, it takes him a while. I'm not gonna say he's, he's reluctant, but it does take him a while most of the times to eat. So I remove everything out of his tub. And I will put well, he wasn't very reluctant that time, so um again i I just always check to make sure that the animal it doesn't matter the size of the animal that the mouse or rat is not biting on the snake um you know so. That way we can make sure that uh, nothing gets hurt, that the food item actually is food. I mean, that's what this is. So now that he's got a firm hold on the on the uh, wrap pup, 
Again, I'll cover him back up and put him back on his uh, shelf with his heat tape. All right, guys, so now um, I have a snake that is probably like a lot of snakes that are out there. Um, when we're looking at Facebook or we're getting questions from people that have ball pythons, one of the biggest things that they say is they have an animal that has been eating. And then all of a sudden it just stops. Um, for whatever reason, ball pythons tend to do that. Um, we do have some that, that have not. But in general, it seems like just like in people, there's differences in personalities that this snake at one point weighed about 530, 540 grams. And then she just, we recently weighed her yesterday or the day before yesterday, and she weighed in at like 480. So, and this has been over the span of about four months. So this is something that we've noticed that she went up in weight, then she kind of stopped eating. So now we're trying to get her back to eating. And to do that, what we're doing is offering her again, the frozen thawed. And then when she doesn't accept that, then we come back and we offer her a live prey item. And she, she does seek it out. Uh, this is a pastel Mojave yellow belly that's 100% head hypo. And so what I'll do is I'll remove her, remove everything from the enclosure or the tub. And one thing I do before I feed is I spot check them the day before to try to clean out any uh, feces or poop that's in there. Uh, and in doing so, it just kind of makes it easier to feed the, feed the animals. Um, because I typically try to feed my animals every five days, depending on their size or where they need to be. So as you see, um, she's still not taking a prey item. So this is the reason why I get a rat pup for this snake. Um, I get a rat pup for this snake because I know that the rat pup won't hurt the snake. It's not, it's, it doesn't have big teeth or anything like that. So what I'm going to do now is just cover the snake up and just leave the rat pup in there with the actual snake so to see if she can eat it or to see if she'll be agitated enough to eat it or develop a wanting to eat it. But I'm doing this because she ate the same size prey item last, last week. So I'm trying to build her up to where I can get her back up to weaned rats. So I'll just take this next step and I'll check back with her for in about 30 minutes. All right, guys, 30 minutes has passed by, and I want to look in here and see if she's eating. And as you can see, she does have a slight swell in her belly. There's no more pup rat, and so she's done eating. So what I'll do now is put all of her housing back in there with a water bottle so she can hide and digest her food. All right, guys, and that's pretty much it for live feeding. But, you know, stick around. We'll have some more on feeding. <coughs> All right, so stick stick around, and we'll have some more on feeding the uh, frozen thawds. Okay, all right, guys. Uh, again, guys, hey, it's important for us to be patient with the with these animals because sometimes they just won't eat. I mean, they don't get prey items all the time in the wild. So um, I'm going to start with this female Wookie. Uh, she's definitely around 100 grams, I think the last time we weighed her. So I will put the put the rat pup inside. I'm going to leave a water dish in there just so it'll make it a little bit tighter to make the rat pup walk around her a little bit more um, to see. So it was the options that I had in feeding was either a mouse, which has fully developed teeth, a develop, an adult mouse, or to put this rat pup in. 
and see what see what she does. Now, if she doesn't take the prey item, it's no big deal. I can always go and get a smaller prey item. But again, I'm trying to help her to grow a little bit faster since I know her metabolism's up a little high right now. Um, and she's still new to eating. I mean, whether they've had, if you have a snake that's 100 grams or less, you know that they've um, more or less have had, I'm guessing maybe six, seven meals, maybe eight meals, but you know, that's, they gain a little, they, they take in a food item, then they poop half of it out, I would think, as far as the weight in grams. So if we can say that this, this rat pup weighs even 20 grams, you know, I'm, I'm really guessing here, 20 grams, then that snake will, will maintain or keep about 10 of that, and then it'll crap out the other 10. And so it's just a, a like a seesaw. You give a little, you give a little. You give a little, you give a little. So, you know, I'll just be patient with her and see if she's going to take it. Now, if it's too big, and I see it might be too big. So this is another lesson to learn, is that if it's too big, then I'll have to go to square two, and I'll just have to get a smaller mouse, like a really small mouse, to try to feed her just to get her to get back on it. But for now, I'm going to let her have some time to see if she's going to eat it. So, because it's a rat pup, what I'll do is I will take everything out, just like I did with the Mojave. We'll cover her up, and we'll put her on the shelf and, and watch her. I had my uh, five um, snakes today with rat pups. You wear the uh, female pastel Mojave yellow belly head and hypo. Did actually eat her rat pup once she was in an enclosed environment over the heat pad. It was more similar to what she's used to. Um, the Wookiee is still not eating the rat pup. But again, guys, this is a measure of patience. All right, so let's see if the Wookiee ate. And the Wookiee still has not eaten. So what I'm going to do is remove that prey item away. Try to grab it as fast as I can without getting bit. And I put it back in the container that I had it stored in. And I'm not going to stress the Wookiee out. So what I'll do is wait a couple of days and offer her a live smaller mouse. Just to... Uh, See if we can get her back on schedule. Um, she ate last week, so and I and I document all of the things, which I think I highly recommend you do the same. Document when your pet eats, your reptile eats, because we're not talking about dogs and cats. But what I will do instead is I will put it in with this uh, acid orange dream. and see if she'll eat. She's been kind of reluctant too, but this is more around her size that she should be eating anyway. So I'm gonna remove the bowl out of there and I will remove the hide. And as you can see, she is about 300 something grams. I'll just see what she does real quick. Let's see if she is uh, motivated to eat or is agitated enough to eat. So, as you can see, this is one of the benefits that I'll talk about too. Uh, one of the benefits that having a smaller live prey item, such in this case is a rat pup, and you know it's not going to do any harm to the snake. And that's one of the, the animals I like to get my uh, snakes back on when they drop off feeding, is because I know that it won't hurt it. So. Just like the Mojave, what I'll do is I will cover her up and put her on her shelf back where she normally lives and just let her be in her dark little place. And then maybe that will spark a, a, a feeding response. And we'll check back in with her in a couple of minutes to see if she has. And if she has, I'll show you guys because I think it's important for you to see the, uh, the results. So even if she eats or if she doesn't, and then I'll discuss what we do as well. All right. All right, guys, so now let's take a look and see if the Acid Orange Dream did actually eat. Let me see. 
Uh, as you can tell, she does have a very kind of large lump in her stomach. Um, I'm checking this. It's been over a couple of hours. Once I saw she ate, you know, I had some other things that I had to take care of, but um, she definitely did eat the rat pup. There's no sign of a rat pup in there. And now I'll put the hide back on top of her. And one of the main things that we always want to think about is still how our animals feel. We want them to be happy. I mean, we don't, we definitely don't know snake language, but we want them to be as happy as they can be. And uh, a happy snake, I feel like, is going to be a well-fed or a well-eating snake, and uh, it'll develop into the type of pet or breeder that you I just thank you guys for tuning in. Um, like and subscribe if you like the information that uh, we were able to give to you today. Uh, we really are dedicated to the animals. Uh, like I said, guys, thanks again for tuning in. And as I, get, as I said before, like and subscribe if you like what you saw and refer us to someone else. Thanks a lot.